Thursday, August 31st, 210 Mountain Time, 2017. Fire in the Sky News, Tropics, and Solar Update. First, Fire in the Sky. Asteroid Florence, it's being called a minor planet. Here's a video here courtesy of uh, Michael Jagger. This guy is probably one of the best astrophotographers I've ever seen. That is the minor planet, 3122 Florence. It's a little over three miles wide. It's expected to make close approach. The first, which is tomorrow, at, not real close, but it's just pretty good size. That's why they're keeping an eye on this thing, because sometimes they can have friends. 18.5 LD, that's around 4 million miles. Not a threat at all. But good size. About two Golden Gate Bridges, if you were to find a comparison here on Earth. Meteor Crater, probably around four Meteor Craters. So you could drive on it easily. Um, pretty good size. Big enough to be called a minor planet. Here is where it's at right now. Coming around from behind the Earth. Uh, Mr. Jagger already took some incredible video of it. And it does look like a full-blown planet. But keep in mind, it's only 3.3 miles wide. So looks something like that. That's a small moon of uh, Jupiter. Now to sprites, fire in the sky, literally. This stuff reminds me of static, uh, static electricity in Earth's atmosphere reaching out to space for something. Like something in space is... And, I don't know, electrifying this stuff. Uh, here's a video of it right here. But what they found interesting here, and this is from a veteran sky photographer too, uh, Thomas Ashcraft. He got the sprites, and there's other pictures of sprites too from this month. This is over in uh, Europe. Pretty uh, extreme example there. And that is courtesy of Martin uh, Popic. Excellent photographs there. Here's some more here. Those things are reaching out into the sky for something. What they're looking at is this thing right here. The photographer has never seen anything like that before, and it's almost like an inverted gigantic jet that we've been seeing that reach even higher than these, clear up to the top of the atmosphere. So to me, it's a form of like static. If you look at the big picture of Earth, and for some reason, parts of the atmosphere, I know they're associated with thunderstorms, and these are at the tops of thunderstorms, and they've never been photographed or seen until we've gotten digital cameras. I understand all that, and I've heard all that, but that doesn't necessarily mean I believe it. I think it's a form of static, period. Something big is causing friction in Earth's atmosphere. Solar update. Coronal hole is departing away from Earth, but it did create a minor geomagnetic storm, a G1. Not that big a deal. And again, that's courtesy of this coronal hole right here. A coronal hole is energy uh, coming off the surface of the sun unchallenged. When there's a gap in the atmosphere, if you were standing on the surface of the sun looking up, you would see clouds and different layers of atmosphere. When it's gone and it's not there to filter the solar wind, that solar wind interacts with planet Earth's magnetic shields, creating geomagnetic storms that are sometimes visible at the North and South Pole. These are visible at the North Pole. I'm a little surprised, though, because the BZ is pointing north. Typically, it's a south-pointing BZ that allows the uh, auroras to light up the sky up in the Arctic Circle. Sometimes, when the BZ is tipped way south, then you can see uh, auroras, northern lights, down in the lower mid-latitudes, but not, not the case this time. And I'm surprised that they're even getting as far as they are with the door closed. Sunspots turning this way. Who knows? You know, these things are very unpredictable. All I can tell you is the energy is there for significant uh, solar flares. M flares, possibly an X flare. Will it happen? Your guess is as good as mine. But there is uh, energy there for solar flares. Will it happen? No clue. Florence, getting ready to pass Earth. Um, close approach, not a big deal, about 4 million miles. But they're calling this thing a minor planet. 
And again, it's about as big as two Golden Gate Bridges. Tropical update. There is an update. We've got another day added to this storm, another day forward. I showed you guys yesterday where it was up to the 8th. That was as far as it would allow me to go. Today we can go to the 9th, and I'll show you what it's showing me. This is a GFS model again. This is on the 5th. This would be Tuesday. And it's got wind speeds of, these are sustained by the way, close to Category 5, the 6th. Wind speeds, 158, that's Category 5, that's on Wednesday. Thursday, this is as far as I could go yesterday. Wind speeds of Category 5. Step it ahead to Friday the 8th, still in the same general area. And keep in mind, this has been updated several times since I showed you guys this yesterday. And we've got another storm behind this one. This one's Irma. I don't know what this one's um, going to be named if things stay the same. Keep in mind, this could change. But this one's got a wind speeds of 137 miles per hour. That's another storm, a Category 2, behind Irma. Path, I, I don't know. I can only go up another day, which is the 9th, and it's kind of got it in the same area, weakening significantly. Irma stays on a North American track. Carolinas, maybe New York, I don't know. But it's still got wind speeds of a Cat 5 hurricane. 174 miles an hour right there. And that's sustained. That's not gusts. You have no way of knowing what the gusts will be. But you know that with sustained of 170-something, 174, the gusts would be fairly significant. But there is another system out here behind this Irma. Um... It looks like it was more organized on the 8th, had wind speeds of over 120 miles an hour. Let's see on the 7th. Yeah, it was there on the 7th too with wind speeds of 107. So then it kind of, I don't know, kind of recycles or comes apart on the 9th, but not Irma. Actually gets stronger. Wind speeds of 177, still North America bound. Thanks for watching, guys, and be safe out there.